The first one is D natural. And it's, it's the juxtaposition of those two. The offsetting of two contrasting things, the juxtaposition of those two things that makes it. It's a constantly evolving challenge. The job that I have now is a different job than I took on 30 years ago in so many ways. I think that music, that the arts in general, help students to really understand the meaning of being alive. It's where things like English and social studies and math and science, which are crucial subjects, languages, all of those things, it's where the gaps need to fill in in our understanding of what it means to be human. That's where the arts pick up. So fascinating about Bellows Falls is its, its denseness, it's a small one square mile, it's compactness, yet as you see behind me, the main street is really a square, it opens up. When I moved up here full time around 1995, the downtown was fairly pretty vacant and quiet. We were able to work with our statewide housing organization, Housing Vermont, who was interested in taking over derelict building in the downtown and I met them by a happen chance at a select board meeting and shared my vision for the building, which was to create affordable housing with a preference given to artists. What's really important is how do we get the concept of the arts into the sensibility of the community. I really feel very good about the way the downtown has developed over this time. I feel it's been a very organic development. Nothing from the top down, much more from the grassroots up. Every morning when I wake up, I really have to pause for a moment and say, what hat am I wearing today? I'm a cook, I'm a father, I'm a grandfather, and a Spanish teacher. I've directed about 75 plays of youth theater. About half of them are Shakespeare. What's great about Vermont is that it's such a small state that somebody like me from the, the southeastern corner, there's almost no school or no town in Vermont where I haven't done something. The kids are so, are, are so distracted by the input that they have from the commercial world and from phones and, and all the other stuff. But put them in a theater class, a Shakespeare class, a, a writing class, a dance class, a, a, a sculpture class, and you just, you got them. If you get into some of the educational sides of things, circus is called risk recreation. There's also social circus, which is about working with people to change their social environment to create self-esteem. So circus can be circus art, but circus because it's also a physical fitness or physical activity and a mental challenge broadens and, and the, the rings just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So for us, circus is a lifestyle, it's a choice of how we approach life. Really anybody can do circus. It's so all-encompassing. We just find that it's a, a unique art fitness platform to have a, a huge conversation. Eventually it was as if the community had invited us to create this thing that we hadn't thought we were going to create. And all of a sudden we had a circus school on our hands. There's an incredible pool of talent here that doesn't have to leave to do this anymore. I left a graduate program uh, in Boston at the Massachusetts College of Art to take a teaching job here at the Putney School in 1989. It, the position was uh, to teach painting and I had never painted before. I woke up every morning to this view. I turned my back on this and I went as far down the hill as I could, as far away from this beauty as possible. I settled on a bramble bush and I set up there for the first couple of weeks and I made, I don't know, a dozen paintings. 
it's enlightening to stand here today and think that it's taking, taken me more than 25 years to kind of climb back up this hill.